Hey guys, this is Ryan. Welcome back to Drinks and Dragons. Tonight we're having Malbec in my awesome goblet mug. Goblet? Dragon? Goblet? In, uh, in this awesome thing. I've had a couple glasses already. And uh, as promised, we're going to continue our conversation on how to play Dungeons and Dragons. And tonight, we're going to be talking about Wakeboard. Magic. Oh, yeah. It's on. All right, so in the last video, uh, we talked about uh, sort of the basics of D&D &D and kind of the role of the, the D20 dice in terms of deciding, you know, your character's fate or the decisions that are made, or the directions that you go. And um, the next big topic we should really delve into, I think, is magic. And this is, this is supernatural magic here. This is Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, casting spells, making things happen kind of magic. This isn't Penn and Teller and, uh, you know, David Blaine stuff. This is actual magic throwing fireballs. You know, using some cool stuff, uh, walking through walls, that kind of craziness. So this is the magic that we have accessible to us in D&D. &D. And so no conversation to me about magic is complete, or should begin rather, without first talking about the classes of creatures, uh, of characters that can actually use magic. So it's almost easier, here, here are the classes, it's almost easier to mention the ones that can't use magic because most of the of the the characters in a Dungeons and Dragons adventure can use magic. So of this list, the ones that cannot, at least initially, are the barbarian, uh, the fighter, the monk, which is kind of another type of fighter, and the rogue. That's it. Barbarian, fighter, monk, rogue. Everything else. Bard, cleric, druid. Paladin, Ranger, Sorcerer, Warlock, Wizard. All of these guys have magic accessible to them at varying degrees. And even some of them, such as the Rogue, for example, will have magic accessible to them as they get more advanced. So inevitably and eventually, you're going to want to deal with magic, understand it, and embrace it because it makes the game awesome. So let's get into a little bit more detail about magic and try to sort of demystify it. All right, so this is my player handbook right here. And I guess one of the bits of advice I would give is if you're going to really kind of get into the game of D&D, &D, you're gonna to wanna to eventually play a character who has magic, or if you're gonna DM a game, you've gotta understand how spells work. Now magic isn't just spells, it is also uh, magical things, such as this awesome goblet, potentially, or, you know, a cloak, or a uh, staff, or a, you know, um, a sword, even, a weapon. You know, these things can have magical properties, so, you know, eventually you're going to have to get into it, and it gets a little complicated, I'm not going to lie. So you've got, you've got levels of spells, and then, you know, you also have levels of, of characters. And so uh, within the levels of spells, you have spell slots that you, so it gets a little bit convoluted. So that's what I'm hoping that this uh, video kind of helps dispel those myths about, uh, you know, using magic in D&D. It does take a little bit of a learning curve, probably a little higher learning curve than other areas, but once you get it, it's awesome because look at this. These are the bard spells that you can cast. Cleric spells, druid, paladin, ranger, sorcerer, uh, warlock, and then of course wizard, as you would expect. So each of these represents a spell, and if we keep flipping through the, the player's handbook, we can see all of these spells have their own sets of you know, casting time and components and duration and characteristics. I mean, the player's handbook is 
full of details on these really, really cool spells. And so we just keep flipping, keep on flipping, flipping, flipping into the end of the book or end of the spell list. So, I mean, that's a lot of spells that we can go through. I mean, just look at Wish. It's a ninth level conjuration. Cast it takes one action to cast it. The range is yourself. It's a verbal spell. It happens instantaneously, but look at all of these options within Wish. So that's why it gets a little bit intimidating because, hey, I'm gonna cast Wish. Well, what, what can I do? Well, you can do any of these things. You know, and you may also be able to do this stuff. So this is why digging into the book when you're wanting to learn how to cast spells makes sense because understanding what your spells can do is important and it helps enriches the game. All right, so before we get any further into um, kind of the use of magic in a game, um, I want to first talk about kind of the levels of spells. Okay, so this is not your character's level. For example, I have a cleric, so my list of spells is in this column, in these columns here. I have a cleric who's a fifth level cleric. Now, these are spell levels. So just because I have a fifth level cleric does not mean I get to cast fifth level spells. This is an important distinction and one of the initial points of confusion. These are fifth level spells. Again, not to be confused with the level of your character. Now, if I flip back to my character, and this is why you kind of get used to kind of flipping back and forth in the book, and I have my tabbed. So here's the cleric section. I kind of know this already. So if I'm a fifth level cleric, which I am, this table here tells me the number of spells in their particular spell level that I, as a fifth level cleric, will get to cast. So if I'm a fifth level cleric, let's just kind of fast forward through the features and the proficiency bonus. I know four cantrips, which are the lowest level of spell. I know four and can cast, sorry, four first level spells. If I can cast four cantrips and four of these. I can cast three second level spells, three of these, and I can cast two third level spells, two of these. All right, and the third level column continues on the other end. So first point of distinction, you, as long as you separate you know, class level, from spell level, you're okay. Okay, that's that's the first big point of uh, sort of confusion. Second point of confusion is the idea of a spell slot. Okay, so um, these are the number of spell slots that I get at a particular class level. So I might know more third level spells, and in fact, I will know more second level and third level spells as I continue to advance in a, as a level in my particular domain, but I can only, in any given sort of set of adventures, um, expend the number of spells or use the number of spells that are equal to the number of spell slots that I have available to me. Okay, so, so back to spells. I was getting a little ahead of myself and like I said, I've had a couple of glasses of uh, Malbec already in my cool dragon goblet. So it, this is probably not the right beverage to be imbibing upon when one is describing spells, but it's cool. Um, yeah, so here I've turned to the chapter in, on spell casting, which actually does a good job of kind of explaining what's up. So it says, regardless of how many spells a caster knows or prepares, he or she can only cast a limited number of spells before resting, and that is your spell slot. So I go back to my cleric page here, 
I can see that, say I'm a fifth level cleric, I, you know, I might be able to only, I'm only going to be able to cast two spells at third level. And if I, I'm a light domain cleric, so you can see here, I automatically get Flaming Sphere and Scorching Ray as a light domain cleric. And I also get Daylight and Fireball. Okay, but I also get other spells. If I look here, that's a lot already to choose from, right? But if I look here, as a cleric at third level, I mean, there's a lot of other spells I can choose, you know? I don't get to know all of these, but I can, irrespective of that, I can only cast, you know, two in any given uh, set of time before I take a long rest. So there's kind of a lot going on there. And, and then you begin to see why it's a little bit confusing because there's a spell level, there's a spell slot, and then exclusive of that are these cantrips, which you can cast at any time, but cantrips are sort of low level, lower level. They're kind of cool things, like I can change my eye color, I can make the ground shake, I can boom my voice. Um, I can actually cast some attacks that don't do a lot of damage. So these cantrips are things that you can do without having to spend a spell slot. And uh, so, so magic gets a little bit, you know, dicey uh, when, when you get down to it. All right, so the one final piece of the puzzle here is, well, okay, fine. I get, I have only a certain number of spell slots I can spend. And uh, I get that, you know, I've got a certain level as a class, which is not necessarily related to the spell levels that I'm using. So how many spells do I get? Ah, how many spells? Okay, so here we go. You go to your class. Here I am again in classes. I'm looking at cleric, and it says here, these are the number of spells total that I can prepare to use. The list of spells that are available for me to cast as a cleric is equal to my wisdom modifier, which is a plus three, plus my cleric level, which is a five. So five plus three is eight. Eight. So I have eight spells of first, second, and third level which are available to me as a cleric to use. Now, I'm a fifth level cleric. I have eight spells that I can use, that I can select from the list, in addition to the spells that I get based on the domain that I've chosen. So I already get Burning Hands, Fairy Fire, Flaming Sphere, Scorching Ray, Daylight, and Fireball, plus eight spells that I can use. So I hope that makes sense. There's like a menu of spells that I can choose. The, the, the total totality of that menu is based upon um, my wisdom modifier, my spell, my class level, right? My wisdom modifier, my class level, and then also on the menu are the spells that I get automatically based upon whatever domain that I am. And this is different for each class, so I encourage you to, to dig into the class that represents the character you're playing and kind of get into the, you know, dig into it, get into the nuance of this thing and learn these spells because I gotta tell you, they can be so unbelievably cool when cast correctly and when cast creatively. Um, so yeah, magic. So I hope that helped you understand a little bit how magic works. Uh, opens up the doors for you to explore magic, to have fun with it. And look, it'll get easier the more times you play. Bottom line, it's the same thing with all of this stuff. So, so play the game, select characters you know, that use magic, uh, and test the stuff out, follow the instructions in the book, roll the dice, be creative, and ultimately have a good time. So from Drinks and Dragons, this is Ryan, signing off.